indeed honored today to have once again with me Dr. Raman Ganga Khedkar, who we know is a renowned public health expert and pharmacy and communicable diseases at the Indian Council of Medical Research. He has also been appointed by WHO as a member of its expert scientific advisory group for the origins of novel pathogens, tasked with probing the origins of pathogens like the novel coronavirus, amongst others. Uh, sir, we are really in honors which we want to end as per the SDG goals. Uh, how impacted HIV prevention, diagnosis, treatment and care? Uh, particularly in the context of our own country, it has impacted it globally also. No, initially, when the lockdown was announced, there was a big scare. Now, the fear was that if you have close to about uh, 16 lakh HIV infected individuals who, who were receiving ART out of estimated 22, 23 lakh, and the fear was if large proportion of them don't adhere to treatment, then it's a big issue because most of them are in public sector. Fortunately, at that time, the PLHA community, you know, they took the lead. They said, we would like to provide drugs to all those who may, who may be staying at home because there was second fear that people had was would I acquire COVID if I go to ART center and then what would happen to me? And then NACO also supported that policy very strongly saying that you can give ART for more number of months, we are willing to provide that. Now that changed the entire thing with respect to treatment. The result is uh, the first component of uh, treatment as prevention no, it continued to work well because people were receiving ART during that time. Now, with respect to other prevention services, yet, yes, it has affected. No, when it comes to uh, testing no, for HIV, that number went down dramatically because neither people approached nor the services could be provided because the health system was a uh, related service delivery center. Now, though new infections may come dramatically because they couldn't, the clients coming to the red light areas, neither, because everybody was scared of that infection. So that, that fear was always there. So do we think that the numbers would have had increased? Uh, we don't have any evidence to say, but to my mind, we may be fairly well compared to other countries because of our high coverage of ART, uninterrupted supplies that went from NACO, so we may be little better off than what we could have imagined. Now, uh, the third issue is, you know, we have been discussing multiple strategies from 2017-18 to be implemented. One of the best examples is PrEP. Mm -hmm. you know? Though the government wanted to go ahead with it, now once the COVID pandemic started, all the policies were suddenly, you know, mush, lost in the whole process you know, because nobody was able to do anything. You look at another aspect that was important because you also saw during that period that there was a time when we had to ask for TrueNet machines that TB program had, you know, the viral load estimations, you know, were also done on RT-PCR. So there were efforts to ensure that we use that infrastructure also for a diagnosis of COVID. But at the same time, I must also particularly say that NACO insisted that we need to continue our uh, services related to HIV. But it is possible that during that period, the early infant diagnosis program must have had also been hampered. Mm -hmm. I don't see why HIV testing in pregnant women was affected because pregnant women in any case had to go. Mm -hmm. 
and hiv testing is done by routinely by in any setting so that must have had happened but when it comes to early diagnosis of infant we really don't know what must have had happened so prep was postponed there were other multi component prevention efforts that were to be launched targeted intervention programs you know they faced all challenges because you can't do outreach you know? so those issues also came up condom distribution programs you know perhaps it doesn't work out really well yeah. when you have a lockdown but in all if i try to look at it have we done badly there i don't think we have done very badly the issue only is that we are yet to estimate the impact of covid though we have done well on continuing art over a yes. period of time even during that period we also ensured because i was always asked by all that plha community to try and promote vaccine covid vaccine okay. among them fortunately for us whatever secondary data we have uh, the number of people who died due to covid and were also hiv infected is very very low and we ensured that everybody tries to take vaccine and what was done during that period was they had uh, virtual meetings with all self help groups among plhs among sex workers and they, it was something akin to a master trainers kind of a training which was also done together with naco you know none of yes, these things yes. were without another impact that was negative that has happened is uh, there was a hepatitis b and c control program you know, viral hepatitis control program that was launched if i rec- remember correctly i think sometime in 2016 or so 15 16 we had already devised a strategy that for hep c treatment we we shall be going through targeted intervention program of naco but it also got delayed <laughs> because it was a it, this program was in infancy only strategies were developed but the actual requirement you know whether it can be implemented we could not do that so essentially for hep b hep c also there has been a setback same is true for tb mm-hmm. for tb there have been some studies which have been done by the program itself where they have found out that the mortality is high mm-hmm. because people did not go uh, to receive the treatment second thing which has happened is uh, early diagnosis that was a forte for tb which was required could not happen because new cases could not be detected people tended to stay at home rather than anywhere else so even if there was an opportunity that use of masks so- social distancing that we were expected to keep should also reflect on other respiratory diseases perhaps it did not happen for tb as much as it did happen for any other respiratory illness so there have been some pluses some minuses but if i look at it unbiasedly i think india overall whether for these diseases or for hiv or for covid we did fairly well compared to other nations however one issue which will keep on bothering us for a longer time is due to the economic impact of covid right now the proportion of people who have gone down below poverty line because of covid continues to be high now you also need to remember that majority of the deaths that occurred in first and second wave were among males you know, who are earning members and the families though there was a free treatment program you no know, initially initially some of them you know they actually um, went to the private sector and 
they paid huge amount of money because everybody was scared and they wanted the best possible treatment so is that led to an increase in proportion of those who went below poverty line now that becomes very important a significant proportion of them may resort to risky behaviors because this gets after covid and that will in turn reduce the social vulnerabilities that will come so uh, you the community actually kept uh, going as far as treatment continuation was concerned and uh, as you mentioned there was a multi -drug, a multi month drug dispensation uh, for can that happen even now will that will that policy continue will it help in some way and uh, also what are the other lessons learned from covid-19 which now now it seems we are getting back onto the rail uh, tracks once again slowly well, i must uh, give credit to naco you know? once the second wave was over they went into flurry of activities to try and find out you know, what newer strategies you need to adopt to mitigate the impact of covid on hiv program and new and newer kind of approaches have also come some of them may not be may not be in public domain as of now i expect that within a month's time you will know more about the changes that have been brought out mm -hmm. they had uh, constituted a very large group of uh, different stakeholders and the brainstorming on different uh, strategies that you need to adopt took place multiple times in that particular group on different domains which are important in hiv control now if you if you actually look at that component the flexibility that they have shown is immense now you would have a slightly different differentiated care model where perhaps the multi month dispensation would be offered not only offered perhaps the number of months would also be increased mm -hmm. so that you know because we have now trusted the community that the community wants treatment now there is no point in unnecessarily telling them that please <laughs> we don't trust you so that is likely to happen mm -hmm. you will have uh, prep being pushed no different stigma related interventions also pushed every yes. possible you know prt guidelines are changing mm -hmm. everything will be seen whether it is adult prt guidelines or pediatric prt guidelines even they have become contemporary as of now so they have made their effort let us hope uh, that the situation remains stable yes for them to implement as well so there is hope for prep to be implemented the prep, prep is program. likely to be implemented in certain risk groups hmm, certain risk groups and what about self testing sir is self testing part of the will it be part of the program self testing is a little debatable area hmm, okay no? hmm, hmm. one of the issues is you may be able to know more people as infected hmm. but that can only happen if the person reports yes. no? mm -hmm. and uh, how do you handle issues related to counseling continues to remain a challenge in our own society so self testing you might see some kind of a statement which comes as supportive to self testing mm -hmm. but what would be the impact on the program of self testing we still don't know and so there need to be there was a small study conducted mm -hmm. uh, on feasibility of offer mm -hmm. of self testing but we may have to look at larger demonstration areas to actually find out whether this is likely to be useful for the program so self testing is a little uh, gray area to my mind okay and just one last question that uh, of course covid has had its bits falls we have seen so much of devastation and so many of many it, most of us losing somebody to that uh, to the pandemic but uh, has it some silver lining in the sense that has it somehow uh, 
increase the health seeking behavior of people and uh, how to deal with other infectious diseases like uh, we saw people using uh, uh, prevention interventions which were in their hands at least to because unless we cut the chain of transmission for any infectious disease how are we going to reach that end tb or end hiv aids so has covid 19 uh, helped in that covid 19 actually created an opportunity for us while fighting with covid pandemic that you could use it for other infectious diseases as well yes now that opportunity if we look at have we done well there no one of the tasks which i remember in the press briefings that i used to think about because there are no guidelines there are no models that are known on how to handle an emergency like pandemic where lockdown yes. is one of yes. the issues and you need to tell every citizen that you will have to wear mask you will have to do and i used to reflect with him that now how do you sensitize people if you look at even hiv programming despite the fact that we may have had uh, this program which is existent for more than three and a half decades now we continue to struggle with respect to hiv awareness indicators no if i have spent three and a half decades and still 100 percent people don't know it the bigger task used to be how will he tell to covid about covid prevention messages fortunately uh, the fear that it had created made people receptive to learn the new things and they adopted it really well when people say that our people did not follow covid appropriate behavior we should compare that with other countries no there were no no issues whatsoever uh, related to adherence to covid appropriate behavior or defiance of government order for that matter now we achieved that very quickly despite the fact that we didn't have we had poorest health liter our health literacy is poor people don't know how to prevent they don't know what is infection so we had to start there from zero and at that time one of my fears used to be that if i use any wrong word you no know, which is ambivalent then you have 135 crore people people would come out on the streets but i will try to make the best possible effort to teach them now there i had a feeling that chronic morbidities it is one of those areas where we did not have sufficient uh, you know efforts being made for people to learn i thought we could have had used that opportunity for diseases like diabetes cancers and things like that for mask we knew that it is going to prevent different infections as well as against pollution you would find that impact would be good but even if we do that one of the key challenges that we had was the long duration of the pandemic now when you have almost two and two two and a half years time you are spending in such circumstances you will always find that now if you say you no know, people don't want to listen about any covid appropriate behavior related messages any message that is related to mask use and things like that because they just hate that particular component what am i trying to say i am trying to say that this particular opportunity where we had receptivity among people to listen to every health messages unfortunately because of the covid lingering in the community perhaps we are losing that opportunity for people to make health literate now can we still do it we can do it but we will need to have some good communication packaging to you know address that issue because nobody now at this juncture you know they they there are competing sort of things you no know, whether they would like to pay attention to health or to earning the daily livelihood now how how do we fit that part in and make people 
still listen to everything you know, that you would like to package is going to remain a challenge but i think the opportunity still continues you know, how we go about doing that is an issue which we will have to see but at the same time uh, what i would say is today we have at least made some baby steps in terms of creating awareness about infections now each one of the programs have to build on those steps which will lead them to achieving the sustainable development goals in 2030 now those efforts may face challenges currently but i suppose you know, now we have involved media to some extent no electronic media is also focusing as much on health which earlier was never the issue you look at social media people are using it now rightly or wrongly is a different issue we need to make people aware that you have to use these medias really well but it will happen uh, one needs to remain optimistic if we could handle the threat of covid pandemic without knowing anything really well i don't see why